Okay, um, in this series of uh, building up the 283 into a 350, um, let's uh, address the oil pump. It's one of the first things internally that you'll deal with that's different. A um, Couple little nuances here. The modern oil pumps uh, I discovered and learned through uh, you know talking to some other people uh, was that some of these, the oil pumps that they come in the, uh, in the core motors uh, or the uh, crate motors, really the quality is not the same as far as the, 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 the heavy duty uh, robustness of the casting and so forth. So I chose to kind of upgrade the uh, crate motor uh, oil pump and I chose specifically a Melling 10553ST. Basically it's a much beefier pump, kind of like the way they used to be. They have a much better um, beefier casting. It is a shark tooth pump and it's also um, and it also is a high volume pump. Now you do not want to use or need to use a high volume pump. So the pump comes with a spring for the standard pressure. So it's a standard volume, standard pressure pump. But it is a shark tooth pump with a much beefier, heavier casting. Also, you need to pay very close attention because the difference here is that with a remote sump pickup, the original pump had a, um, had a tapped hole in the bottom cover of the pump for these fittings here. And the pumps that you buy now don't have that. They are not tapped uh, for this. So this pump has a 5 8 um, inlet, smooth inlet, um, versus a 3 quarter inlet. If you buy a pump that has a 3 quarter, uh, it will be too big to tap for, I believe this is a half inch MPT. Um, so these are the original fittings out of the 283. A remote system, remote uh, sump pickup system. So this pump has a 5 8 hole and basically I let my machine shop take this bottom cover and um, tap this for the appropriate uh, pipe thread. Um, so that's the first thing you have to watch out for. And now then I again, so I've got a standard volume, standard pressure, uh, better quality pump in this. Put your uh, Crisscraft fittings in here, basically these uh, these pipe fittings, and you'll notice that this fitting is straight down, but the bottom fitting is turned a little bit of an angle, and that's because you can see the block goes inward here on one side, and that's so that your pump uh, hose to your sump kind of runs along the side, along the side here. Now let's look at the actual differences in the pan. Uh, the pan itself is a uh, Chris Craft aluminum pan, pretty heavy pan. Uh, when you convert, you have to do uh, reliefing of the pan so that you clear the uh, rod, uh, rod journals here because they will come closer to the edge of the pan uh, than the original 283 did. Obviously, I have a longer stroke here. So basically, to do that... Um, I got some material here called uh, die chem. And you basically put the die chem around the edge. You set the pan down on top of the engine there. Uh, and then you just slowly hand turn it. And it will put a mark where it actually touches. And through a process of elimination, you, uh, you relief that pan. Um, now, I used a very, very handy tool, which was worth every cent. I picked it up for about $100. Um, it's the uh, Ingersoll die grinder. It's a small handheld die grinder, and I picked up a bit that is made for uh, aluminum. And boy, that makes the job really, really easy. Um, I would hate to try to do this by hand um, because there is one particular area where you have a lot, quite a bit of reliefing. And that's where you can see this pan, where the pan curves and curves inward. And that's where I had to do the most of the relieving right here. Now, most of the other areas are pretty mild. I would say maybe an eighth of an inch to give you plenty of clearance. Probably want at least 60 thousandths clearance um, on each side. 
of, of the rotating assembly. But up front here, this is just the part to watch out for, where it uh, angles in, you've got a relief basically all the way to the main, the main uh, balancing part of the crank uh, to the uh, rod journals that come through this area right here. You can see I had some black marks to kind of tell me what was hitting and where. Once I did it for one pan, I went over and I did it exactly for the other pan and it was, did it right the first time without any problems on the clearance wise. So this is, can be intimidating, it's really not. Um, if you have the right tools and you take your time and you get this, this material to see where things are touching. Um, and probably took me five, six times on and off, on and off, blowing it out, cleaning it each time so I didn't get any metal shavings back into the engine. Um, and just by process of elimination. And, uh, and that's where I found this area is the, the one to watch out for. Now here's your sump assembly. Let's talk a little bit about the differences here. And this is obviously bolts into the bottom of the, the pan, just like that. Um, and it has a flexible braided hose that goes back to the oil pump. Now, the original hose, here is the original hose. Um, they're 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 pretty robust, uh, but honestly, I didn't want to I didn't want to trust, you know, a lot of money in a brand new engine to a very very old hose. I mean, you're 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 talking about a 60 year old hose, the rubber inside. So I went to my local um, hose shop, and I had them make me up a stainless steel braided Teflon hose with the same fittings to match up with the exact same length. And they ensured that the inside ID of this original hose is the same in this hose. So everything is everything the same. That cost me about $90 a hose, and I think it's well worth it because you just you don't want to have an oil problem uh, on, your, uh, on your engine. So that's the main, main nuances of the, uh, of the pan. Um, and as we go together and assemble this, I'll, I'll just walk you through uh, actually doing it. Now back to the block here real quick. So a couple of things that you will notice immediately is that the throughout the generation of block, and you get into the 350 block, obviously the you have a bulge here for the um, dipstick. Chris Craft uses the dipstick out of their pan. So this will need to be filled. This hole will need to be filled. Um, some blocks, your block might have it on both sides and some blocks might have it only on one side. No worries about having it on both sides. You do the same thing. You fill this, and I'm gonna use uh, the ultra gray um, uh, uh, silicone, high tent silicone there, to, uh, to fill that hole in. And then of course your pan gasket will go right over the top of that. And so you won't have any leaks and your holes will basically be filled here. Um, same thing on your on your rear seal here, going over the top. Uh, you'll see a lot of videos about that, where you you, know, you put a little bit of a little bit of uh, silicone here, a little bit of silicone here, maybe maybe in the in the uh, groove itself, and on the outside to get a good seal around that. And then obviously on this end, you don't have any seal at all because this is open, and we'll see that later on in this build how the housings uh, go on to the rear and the front of the. Uh, of the marine conversion. 